What is up mother pluckers? Welcome back to my channel. In this video today I'm going to be looking at the difference between rhythmic, textural and lead playing. So this is basically when it comes to things like uh, arranging songs. So when you're singing and playing or if you're playing as part of a group or basically anything just to spice up your playing a little bit. Okay, so let's get cracking straight away. This video is brought to you with the support of my patrons. Without these guys, I couldn't do what I do. So if you want to get loads of exclusive content, including sheet music to all of my tutorials, click the links below in order to find out more. Okay, so first things first. Rhythmic playing. Now this is going to be fairly straightforward and quick for you guys because this is what a lot of ukulele players out there do. But any stringed instrument as well, especially if you're uh, strumming and singing. This is basically playing chords and usually playing chords in their simplest form. So if we were to take our favorite chords in the world, obviously we've got a C, F and G and you're just strumming along merrily. Oh, no G7 there for you. But the idea is that you're doing the, you're providing the foundation for any song. So it's usually chords in their root position down at the bottom of the neck uh, and they're harmonically quite simple. They just get the job done. And this is great because this gives our textural playing something to go on top of. And you can do this with any genre, you know, you can do it with reggae. This is still a rhythmic element. You're kind of replicating a drum kit if you haven't got something like that. So the rhythm side of things, fairly straightforward. I imagine most of you have got it. But we come to the textural side of things. Now this is where I'll hopefully start to challenge some of you and what we're looking at today. So something textural, if the rhythmic playing is the bed, okay, that's the bass. Without the mattress on the bed, you can't sleep on the bed, regardless of how many sheets and lovely duvet covers you've got. I don't know how I got onto beds. The textural stuff is the sheets, the pillows, the quilt, all of those things that enhance the bed and make it great. You could sleep on a bed with just a mattress, but with a sheet on top, it's lovely and delightful. So with when it comes to textural playing, what we're looking at is trying not to strum and utilizing other techniques to Add a lovely bit of spice, add a lovely bit, a couple of pillows on top of your bed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some different ways in how to play C, F and G to add some textural play. I'm going to be doing a bit of finger picking now. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to take a G chord first of all. And I want you to slide that all the way up to the seventh fret so that you get a C. This is a, a different inversion of a C chord. So the notes are just in a different order. And that's lovely. And what I want you to do is I want you to place your thumb on your C string and just kind of rest it there. Here, your first finger on the E string, just rest it there again. And then your middle finger on the top A string and just rest it there. And you're just gonna sort of pluck one, two, three at a time. And it's already a texture on top. It's not strumming it whole hog, it's just and when you combine it with a chord, it provides a texture. So there's the first chord position. Then what I want you to do is I want you to take your middle finger and your ring finger and place them on the fifth fret of the C and the E string and then place your first finger on the third fret of the A string. And that's going to give you an F chord. Lovely. And again, thumb on the C string, first finger on the E string, and third finger plucking the A string. Then you're going to take that chord position and slide it up towards you two frets to get a G. Lovely. So all three of those together, we have that C chord. Then we have the F chord. Then we have the G chord. Ho oh, ho, G chord, let's try that again. So, what you can do is once you've mastered the left hand technique, you can start thinking about 
basically randomly plucking strings in any random order you like because there's no right or wrong way to do this and this is what makes textural playing so nice you're just experimenting with putting things on top so for example I could do okay but well watch the example here and see what I mean okay So once you've got a hang of textural playing, then we come to um, lead playing. Soloing, improvising. Usually we see this in the guitar world, but you know, you can do a pretty decent solo on your ukulele as well. So that's cool. Basically, when you solo, you take a scale, which is just a bunch of notes in any order you like, and you play them, again, in any random way you like. Thinking about it melodically, you're playing one note at a time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a C major pentatonic scale. Now, pentatonic scale has five notes in it because a pentagon has five sides, so pentatonic scale has five notes. And what you can do is you can use this scale to solo over a C major chord, but also uh, most C major progressions. So if you had a C, F, and G, you could use a C major pentatonic scale to do this. So we start with open string on the C string, then second fret on the C string, then fourth fret on the C string, then third fret on the E string, then fifth fret on the E string, and then we go to the third fret on the A string. Okay, so all together that sounds like this. And there is the scale shape that you can memorize. Okay? And then from that, again, like the textural stuff, it's just about experimenting, trying things out in a different random order. So you could just do... You know, it's simple, but it's a good place to get you started and just build that confidence once you've memorized that shape. So all of these things together, rhythmic, textural, and lead, can allow you to, again, spice up your playing if you're playing as part of a group. So if you're playing as part of an ukulele group, you can try maybe something a bit different. As long as you know the chords and as long as you know those chord shapes, you can have a go at that. Excuse me. But also, this is great for if you have a loop station and you wanna try writing your own songs, or even if you just wanna mix it up a bit. If you're a bit tired of C, F, and G like that, then play C, F, and G like that and strum it. It sounds lovely if you have that open G ring in as well. Or even think about playing the chords you already know and love, but instead of strumming them, playing them texturally. And just plucking random strings in any random order. Experiment, try and get yourself out of your comfort zone. Right, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to make you think a bit more about what you're playing. And then you can even try incorporating everything together. So, you know, you could play. Right, 
I'm not claiming to be any good at it, but you can really experiment and just hopefully discover more stuff about your instrument. And I'm babbling on a bit now, so I think that's a great place to leave it. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And if you've enjoyed this video, consider subscribing because I'd really appreciate it and it will really help me out, as well as heading to the links down below to my Patreon page. Anyway, ukulele Simon, what? <laughs> Huh, okay.